Before we jump into today's content, I'm super excited to share that we got 10,000 views in the last 30 days, and I'm really glad that you find this helpful, but my analytics is telling me only 9% of you are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you like the content and find it helpful, please subscribe and be a part of my community. And now back to the video. Today we're going to talk about Summer 21 release features, and I'm going to focus on all the flow enhancements that is coming up with Summer 21. And if you are new to this, and if this is your first release that you are uh, experiencing, welcome. I highly recommend checking out this uh, Summer 21 release guide that Salesforce publishes. And they publish this before every release actually. And it tells you what are the different key milestones. So you can also get access to a pre-release org if your sandbox is not in the release. So you can actually play around with those new features that is coming up ahead of time once you sign up for this org for every release. So you don't have to do this for every single release. Okay, with that out of the way, let's look at the enhancements. So I want to focus on three different types of enhancements around the flows, which I'm super excited about. Uh, we've got the screen or flow builder enhancements, then the record trigger enhancement, as well as more debugging features. So let's start with the screen enhancements. I'm gonna have new flow and select screen type of flow to screen flow. Next, let's try out auto layout. And I'm just going to add a screen element here just to show you the features. So the first feature is uh, more around GA. So section was beta last release, now it's GA. For those of you who don't know what section is, you can actually have multiple columns configured into the screen element. This was new last release, so you can actually add more columns if you like, if you wanna keep it more compact. So now this is GA, you can use this feature. The feature I'm super excited about is actually this fields beta feature. So before, if you wanted to create a form, for example, you wanna create a form to gather all the account information and you wanna create account data. To do that, you'd have to add one by one every type of field that you can expect. But with this feature, what you can do is create a record variable of account type and this will bring all the fields from account into your screen element for you to use. And I shouldn't say all, but some majority of the fields. There are limitations. It does not support lookup fields or pick list fields and some of the other fields that it is not supported. But since it's in beta, you can expect that that should be coming up pretty soon as well. And then data type, select record here. And since I'm interested in account fields. I'm just going to select account. Hit done. You don't have to check available for input if you don't plan on embedding this on a page. Okay, so now that I have created that, I will start noticing that I've got all these different fields because in the background is querying the metadata of that account object. Just going to say account name. You want to use that. And then maybe count number. And that's it for now. So what if I wanted a type field? You can get the type field because that's a pick list. It only supports certain types of fields. So you cannot have a pick list field here. But you can still mix and match. So it will still save you a lot of time. You can go back to uh, the components and actually start pulling in the fields that's not here, so for example, address. If I want to pull in address, which is another enhancement, by the way, that you can now view or preview right here on the screen element, these standard, standard elements. Before, it used to just say manage element or something like that, but now you can actually see all the different fields that is expecting, which is also nice to actually have an idea of what you're going to expect. There's some enhancements around pick list as well. So let's say I wanted to add a type field here and I'm gonna call it just type and you now have this required checkbox which is new as well so no need to use uh, weird workarounds just to make it required or not required so that's awesome and let's add a choice new resource type is pick list and I just want the type field you can default it if you like and here you can also select default values this is more advanced than what we had now i'm just going to say prospect is my default option it doesn't show up here but it will show up uh, when we do the debugging 
And another option is uh, features. You can actually now say whether users want to select multiple options. Yes, then that will change to checkbox. And you can also say, I don't want the checkbox group. I want it multi-select pick list. So you can control all this from right here, configure choices without having to start over. So another feature is actually around the visibility. So let's now, if I wanted to hide this industry until and unless somebody selects not prospect. So I only want to show this industry if the type is not prospect. So what I want to do here is make a condition, go to screen components, say type, is not prospect just like that make sure it's spelled, spelled correctly and now you can see there's this i symbol which is helpful if you have bigger screen elements just gonna hit done here we need to have a name and if you want to look at the debug debug details now you can see i have four columns here account name and type if i select something else the other thing should appear here dynamically and that's pretty much it and just a quick note so just having this fields does not mean it will automatically create the record if you wanted to save this record you then have to have a create record component added after that so basically you'll say create records and you'd have to actually create that record from that initial input element, just like with anything else on the screen element. Just a quick note. Okay, um, now let's look at a different type of flow. I'm going to do a new flow. And this is another feature that I want to talk about, record trigger flow. So let's talk about the enhancement here. You can now have is changed on the right on the start or start element of a record trigger flow. To use is changed, you'd have to have a record is updated or a record is created or updated, either of those options. And then I'm gonna select account. Let's just say active is changed. So this is exciting because this wasn't available and you'd have to have a decision element and then compare prior value to the new value, whether it matches or not, then you do certain things. But now you can just have that all directly on the start element. So if the active is changed is true, then do something else basically. And you can, this uh, is I believe available in all the different types of uh, elements as well. Next, I wanna talk about the collection sort element, which is really exciting because you can now control how many records you want to have in a collection and also how to sort it. So let me show you an example. I'm just gonna pull up the collection sort here and you definitely need a collection to be able to sort the collection. I'm just gonna say sort collection. And if you're from a developer background, this is your order by whatever field, DESC or ESC and then limit. So let's say I have a variable of contact. So that could be a collection variable. You can sort it by let's say birth date and ascending or descending order. You can also add multiple sort options. So that what that will do is take the collection and nicely arrange it into an order. And then you can say how many items you want it. So this is the limit. So in your SQL query, that's the limit component. So let's say if you want only care about top 50 paying customers or top 50 clients, whatever that might be, you can just have sort by annual revenue, set the maximum to 50, for example. So this is huge because this would require you to create or use a lightning component or a managed package app exchange product to be able to just do that. So now you can do this out of the box and you obviously need your collection variable before this. So you'll have a get records prior to using the collection sort, then you'll connect those and then use the collection sort and proceed with whatever other requirements are. And we might make a separate video just on this, but just for you to know that's collection sort. Now I want to talk about another cool feature that I'm super excited about. It's the debugging feature. So before um, summer 21, you'd have to actually go do your record, uh, do the things that your flow is expected to do, then test it that way. Um, so you'd have to end up being activating, deactivating multiple versions if that's not working. But now you can actually use debug. 
So you don't have to have the flow active. You can debug it just like that, just like other flows. Um, you can also skip start conditions. So maybe you want to debug it for regardless of what the condition is. So it's giving you a lot of control here. Um, and maybe I just wanted to select a record here and run the flow as if the record is created or updated because I selected two options. So it lets me do that here as well. Let's just say updated and run. And this is the feature. Another feature I was talking about is that being able to actually see the flow while you're debugging it. So it's actually telling me the flow started here. So that's highlighted. And then it didn't really do anything because it didn't meet the condition. So now let's say debug again. And this time I'm just going to say skip start conditions and run. This time it will run because I skipped the start condition and my flow is not really doing a lot here. It's just to test out. Now let's look at another feature, um, which is also around debugs. You can actually go to post interviews, post and failed flow interviews. You'd only have to, you'd only see the past interviews, but now you're able to see failed interviews here as well. I don't have any failed, but this is where you'd come in and see all your failed flow interviews for all the flows that failed in your org. I want to mimic some error here just to show you. Let me, if you notice here, the, the debugging itself has improved a lot. It tells me what happened, created one record where description is null, result failed to create record, and also the error condition right here, error record. Really better than what we had before. And now I'm gonna go back to my failed interviews and see if something is showing up here. There we go. So now we have failed interviews and it's telling me, okay, this is the failed. And if you click on it, it takes you to that uh, builder and it'll show you what happened here and how, how did it fail? It came here and that's it, it failed. It didn't even go any further from that. So that's very awesome, uh, easy to debug it. So another feature I want to talk about is actually being able to update the record that you started from with so much ease. So let's look at what I'm talking about. Um, so let's say I wanted to update the record that triggered the flow update account so before this option wasn't available so now you can just say if you wanted to update certain fields on that account which triggered the flow you can just say use the account record that triggered the flow instead of having to specify conditions to identify records then set fields individually or one of these two options now you can just pick this option and what that lets you do is you can then further set the conditions whether or not you want it to trigger it or not and then you can just set the fields directly here. It's all about saving time, which I'm noticing a lot of these flow features will be a huge time saver for you. That is all for today. Those were my favorite flow features on Summer 21. Please let me know in the comments if I missed something or which one are your favorite and which one are you excited about. Also, I'll be making another video on other Summer 21 features. So watch out for that. If you like the content so far, hit that subscribe button and share with anyone that you think might be benefited from this. Thank you so much for watching.